Hi guys, I'm the British Deb Deb 2 man, and today I got another video for you. So, as you guys probably know, it's victory day today. So, yep, here is my M45 album flash. I finished it, I finished it um, two days ago. And so, this is the tunic, and here are the trousers. So, yeah, you guys have seen the trousers before in another video. So, that was basically, yeah, I could add um, optional, like, the canvas attachment at the bottom, but I'm not going to bother with that. Um, so, yep, yeah, basically, um, so there's the watch pocket, uh, the flies, um, and then the top of the flies, hooks, um, the, the part of the side, for adjusting the waistband, uh, the pockets here and here, um, and the the two back hoops, and the braces, the buttons for the braces, and there, and on the other side, there, and on the back. Uh, two ass pockets, so one there, the other there, and so, yep, there's that, and moving on, here's the tunic, um, belt, belt hoops here, hooks rather, um, belt hooks here and here, and, um, in the belt, belt hook holes, um, I don't have the internal suspenders for them, um, but I guess they they went out of use at the end of the war. Um, from what I heard, um, and we've read, uh, it's, I've taken the zips off here in in this stupid elastic band uh, thing, and attached a button, and then taken the zip off the front. Um, I've added the buttons and the button holes. Didn't just fake putting the buttons on by just sewing it on and putting velcro or something real deal um, I will I did this all by hand uh, it was very time consuming and here's the bottom part um, I the jacket originally if went up to about here where my finger is um, so I cut it down massively um, because that's what they look like and I need to put a drawstring in this and it should be fine I cut the pockets smaller from being originally there to there and they're um, slightly a bit too much but who cares um, I changed, took the epaulets off um, and re-sewed them so I had a pair of shoulder boards which saved me able to buy them and I can model them on the shoulder boards of my panzer wrap uh, if I can show it to you guys every piece of rubbish in my room tangling uh, so similar to these ones you see try to make it the same as that so yep um, and I I cut the collar short and we sewed it um, and then Oh, it also had these massive weird ass patches on the arms and I took them off but taking them off meant I had to sew up the seams so overall that is that uh, that basically concludes the up and flush delay monster thing oh and I also had to add the little things to attach the shoulder balls to so yeah, I might be wearing that to Village at War this weekend, which is tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I don't really know why this is kind of celebrated as VE Day, seeing as German troops surrendered on the 9th. Um, but there were quite a lot of German troops that held out for longer, such as garrisons at Dunkirk, I believe, held out till the 12th. And, and there was another one. It was quite a big one. It, it was like had a couple of islands attached it to it as a U-boat base. Um, I can't remember the name of it though. And 
they were both kept on being resupplied to the end of the war. Um, for example, Dunkirk, it had, I believe, when the British and French troops took it, it had um, sizable amounts of ammunition and food in there, so it could have held out under siege for a long time and actually done, the troops in there could have done some pretty big damage. But uh, they chose not to, they chose to surrender. And there were also troops that refused to surrender because they knew what Allies liked to do. Um, so, anyway. Well, anyway, Army likes to do when they enter a country that they just conquered. So, I'll move on to some other stuff that I've got. So, here I've got... I went to an antique shop and I um, decided to buy this. And this is just like an ordinary cigarette tin uh, from probably modern. Because um, I think that could be a Queen's Crown. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, let's try and focus the camera again. So inside it, I just kept some coins that I also bought at the antique shop. Now these are incredibly rare from what I understand. Not all of them, but so I got. I did get a couple of modern, uh, well, not modern, but newer coins, such as I got some two thirty bits, uh, one dated forty two, one dated thirty seven, a nineteen twenty dated penny, um, a nineteen seventeen dated penny, and a nineteen oh six dated penny. I think. Try and focus. You see, 1906 dated. Anyway, so they're not the interesting ones. The interesting ones are these ones here. Um, so, first of all, take a look at this. This is a George the Third coin. Uh, camera, don't want to focus. I'm using my camera, not my phone today, so it's. Apologies for the rubbish quality of the focus, because my phone's run out of memory. This is 1808 or 1806 there. And then you can see the three for the third. So, there's that. And here's another one. Um, it says Britain, and there it finishes. And this one also is 1806 dated at the bottom. Uh, can you see that? Blooming thing doesn't want to focus, but it does say 1806 at the bottom. Anyway, so, yeah. And then there is this coin, which I think is either more than one coin that's melted together in a fire, or, uh, it's, anyway, it's unreadable, but I think it looks really old. Um, so, here's another coin. Um, this one, however, is dated at the bottom. Seventeen, seventy something. Seventeen ninety-five, I think, I don't know. Can't read it that well. Um, this one is kind of like another one that's a bit kind of iffy, but I think this is probably another towards the third coin. Because oh wait, no, this is this is um, towards the second coin, I think. Because um, you can you can see it if this stupid camera will focus. Um, it says seventeen seventy eight at the bottom. Um. And here is another coin. This is, I think, the best quality coin I've got. And this has got a very clear date, 1777. And here is, and there's the, the head. The head's very worn, but it seems like a German pickle help instead of the law wreath's crown. Um, but anyway, here's another one. George the Third. Is it George the Third? Yeah. Um, and, um... And this says 1774, yeah, 1774 at the bottom. 
So, yep, yeah, and this is a farthing, and it says 1866 at the bottom there, and on the other side it's got Queen Vic's head. So, yep, yeah, all in all, I paid a pound for all that, uh, which is a blooming good deal, I think. So, Yep, basically that's all the all the coins um, that I got, which are new. So, yep, I'm gonna keep try and keep those coins safe because I think they're quite valuable. If they're not valuable, then to me they're valuable because they're over 200 years old. So, I move on. I also got this from the antique shop which is 200 mark banknotes this is German I believe um, and then the bottom one I'm pretty sure is Austrian partially because they got this really awesome thing that they do when you hold it up to the light picture of the Austrian Emperor's head and 100 and then it says just like 100 there and 100 there and a W so uh, yep yeah, the this is 1908 dated uh, this camera has got such a bad zoom, it's not manual as such, you've got to press a button to hold when you hold it down and then it'll almost certainly go past the zoom you want and then this one's 1920 dated so yep, that's basically that um so yep i paid two pounds 75 for that which i think is quite good for what they are this has got a slight bit of damage here's the other side um it's got 100 and then it's funny d number this is 100 100 mark 100 marks and it's like got some interesting things here such as it's got the plow and it's got like a medical symbol um, I think that the Imperial kind of Germans and Austrians uh, did have um, kind of like a primitive health service, um, but correct me if I'm wrong. And there's the back of the other note. I'm not going to take them out of the sleeve because I don't want to damage them. So, yep. Now, this is the next thing I got, which is um, a razor. Wool's razor in a silver plated case it says. Um so here's one part that's just the top I believe. Uh what could be for the bottom, I'm not sure. Anyway, so here it is. Um I've not figured out yet how it works, apart from it does come out of the case. The case is sadly broken. Um but it, it looks like it would have originally had this lovely kind of scaled thing, maybe snake skin that's been dyed, funny colour, I don't know. Um, anyway, so it has this funny thing here, and this looks very similar to a normal shaving razor, rather, handle um, from the time, but it's, I've no idea how to use it. Um, but I bought it because it looked rather good. Now here it says, um, and it was very cheap, and... I think for what it is, it's good. It says Rolls Razor 1927 Limited, and then it says all these paintings and stuff like that. You probably won't be interested in it. Um, and so, yep, uh, you can take the bottom off by pressing this button here, and that pops off. And that is um, like the thing for sharpening it. It's a, it's a razor strip strap rather that's how you sharpen the razor but I've absolutely no idea how to use it so if you guys know you maybe like have to put it in there like that and hold it anyway um you can take the razor head off by something like that and here's the razor head and it's got the patent number on it says razor rolls razor rather you see if you look here no way how this can fit onto that and this handle doesn't fold back so I have no idea how to use it um, 
anyway, this just moves up and down. And yep, I paid a pound for it, and I think I got a good deal. So yep, I'll move on. Next thing I got was uh, this uh, rather battered officer's uh, cap. I believe it could be First World War. Um, but I've not got any proof of that. Oh, it's missing the uh, chin strap that was attached, uh, which is rather sad, but so what. Um, and so here is the uh, label. And it says by appointment. Uh, and I believe that means that it's just like a, a tailored hat that's been made for him or whoever the officer was. Um, so, yeah, it's got this rather weird paper that, that's basically falling to bits that was, I believe, probably either sewn in or put in because the hat was too big for the person. Um, so, yeah, it's lost the front part of the leather band uh, which should go around it and I paid 4 75 for it. Um, so, yep, yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, it's very worn at the front. I think that's probably from where someone's taken it off their head and put it back on their head so many times. I'm going to have to reshape it. Funny, weird stain. Blood, probably rust. I have no idea. Um, anyway, very interesting. So, yep. This is one of the most unusual finds I've found. I believe this could be an original Victorian cap. And just by the look of it, and the fact that I think, I'm pretty sure it was made before 1906, because if you have a look around it, there's no vent holes. And I believe that vent holes started appearing on caps after 1906, such as with this one, because uh, I've seen a 1906 dated cap with uh, with vent holes, and then I've seen a cap that was made before that that didn't. Uh, anyway, so it's very kind of the visor's badly bent because uh, it's been probably stored wrong um, or somewhere not very nice. It was four quid. I think that was pretty good. Um, some more has removed the label which is rather annoying so I can't tell whether it definitely is Victorian or not but it does say real um, I think it says real groom leather or something like that uh, real something leather anyway um, so yeah, it's quite moth eaten I've seen some American Civil War uh, caps that have got uh, damage consistent with this and it looks very similar to but the visors of some original American Civil War cappies I've seen but it's probably not um, it might be, which would be nice I've seen American Civil War style caps similar to this but I'm thinking it's probably earliest maybe 1880s max 1880s I'd say uh, British officer's cap um, so yeah it's pretty nice I like it a lot um, so yep yeah, now I got one more interesting find now here's my supposedly Swedish um, backpack it's quite I don't know why but it's got an M43 German trouser belt attached to it here and another interesting thing is inside it here it's got these funny buttons this is my original Hitler Youth um, bread bag there's the RZM mark and all, all that if you really want to be nitpicky and say that I'm being too over this with it um, see these buttons so there's a bet, better one here let's look at this see the buttons
there's, an, there's more buttons inside. Which, uh, you see this? You see this button here? Um, try very much to show you what it, the comparison between them. But here and here. Or even better than this one right here. They look exactly the same to me. Apart from this one's quite rusty. My teeny bit rusty. They, I think they look identical to me. So this could be German in my opinion, but I've not found any label inside it or any other stamps apart from this name. Um, Marmion, uh, which is probably from a film or something, or well, maybe it could have been the previous soldier who owned it. Uh, it is kind of the remnants of what could be one of these, I don't know, but it might not be. It could just be someone stuck a sticker on there and it ripped off, but um, ripped off badly. But hmm. I still like to say it's German, but everyone out there is going, oh no, German backpacks had like two loops here and here. And yeah, well, I think it could have been, possibly a German officer could have per per purchased this, or maybe, um, like, there were some Swedes I know served in the, uh, in the Raffin SS, which they were about, um, I think there was about 300 that made up one, Unit in inverted commas, so it's like a Swedish company of the uh, of a armored unit of the 12th, no, not 12th, the 11th SS Panzer Division Nord, uh, what was it? Nordland, uh, and they were the fourth company, and they were all made up of Swedes, or mostly made up of Swedes, um, and there were some Swedes that served in the Wehrmacht and the SS just not in that unit and there were some um there's some Estonian Swedes as well served as well. Uh, so anyway and then there's the kind of like the D hook here for the like the typical thing that German backpacks had. I could be wrong, I don't know guys. Tell me what you think about it. Um so I think it's quite interesting. It still doesn't explain why that there would be an M43 belt attached to this. That is what's really weird. So, yeah, I've not taken it off since I bought it. Um, but might as well take it off now and have a look at it. Put the camera down. Quite stiff. <sighs> Held together with tension. Come on. Yeah, there you go. And it's the first time it's ever been taken off. So here it is. I believe there's to be an original M43 belt. It might not be, but I'd like to believe it is. It, if the Swedes had anything like this, please tell me, because then I would have got my hope, I would have got my hopes up. And um, so anyway, um, yep, that's basically it. It's rather strange that they attached it here, but oh well got some characteristics of German and Swedish bags that I've seen such as it's got the almost the same Swedish A but A frame inverted commas but it's, it's quite it's got some differences such as a Swedish A frame I believe uh, didn't have that bar there and Swedish bags they had like the Y strap uh, 
wire strap like hooks to attach them to the either the ammo pouches or to something here. The this part here was would have been had like some piece of cloth attached to it to stop it from hurting the soldier's back. And so yep, yeah, I don't know if it's German, if it's Swedish or not, but I'd like to believe it's German. Um, partially because I mean, can't imagine the Swedes having something that looks very German bread bag like. Take a look at this. I mean, looks almost identical. Um, I don't know. And there's the inside. It's got another kind of similar thing. I'm I'm thinking it's German, but could be wrong. If you find anything that looks exactly the same as this. Please tell me so I can go and find out what it actually really is. Because um, the Swedish ones I've seen, they've never had a centre pocket. They've only had the outside pockets for the M39 ones. And I've seen one we, ones which have no pockets on the outside whatsoever. So, yeah, they've never... None of the Swedish M39 ones I've seen have had a middle pocket. So, guys, if you know, please tell me what it is. Could this be where they had Second World War German factory label such as this? Or could that just be a sticker that someone's ripped off rather badly? Uh, I think these are original buttons, like I said before. Do you guys? Because, I mean, the comparison between these and take a between that one and that one there see they look the same same three holes same kind of flat curving out that was dome shape to them I mean I'm not sure um, so yeah basically that's the end of the video comment subscribe bye